Virgo. Happy New Year, Virgo. Listen, 2016, who knew that a year could fly by that quick, huh? So, listen, we're going to be following Mars because Mars is your direction. It's those ambitions and goals that you're going to be setting out to do and we're going to see exactly what they can magnetize and attract into your life. And it's starting out here in your second house for money and income. And this is where you were working towards the end of 2015. Having that said, you want to wrap it up best you can before that of January 4th, when Mars is going to move out of this area for you and into your third house. So whatever you can lay is solid, good foundations. Speak with whatever you need to speak with to improve your financial situation, whether that is with perhaps speaking with your manager, your supervisor, uh, looking into other income streams. But I do see that you're balancing at least your financial situation pretty well. After January 4th, uh, Mars is moving into your third house, which is the area of communication. You're going to see that communication is going to be that much more important. It's going to call you to the forefront. People are going to be looking up to you to, to initiate and set things in motion. And so you will. And I feel also that the area of your siblings might come into the picture a little bit more for those of you who have siblings, but it's also your, your closer community, your neighborhood, and maybe doing things, volunteering there uh, a little bit more so as well. Now, Mars likes to be on the move. It's antsy, you know, it's energy. And the third house loves to travel. So, but we're not really necessarily talking about long distance at this time. Uh, but it's more out and about, maybe just to get away for a, a weekend or do a road trip, a day trip or something. It helps you alleviate the pressure on your mind because Mars is going to be very much so here uh, communicating with you. Your internal chat might be very um, enhanced throughout this time here. So it's good to get away just a little bit. Mars will then be tapping into family and your foundation uh, also real estate. It's looking at where you live and how you live. This will be the uh, period between March 7th and that of May 28th. So family may be more so your focus, your goal uh, to spend more time with them, catch up and do what needs to be done at your residence. Mars wants to probably want to look at necessary repairs. It takes two years around the chart. And so uh, there might be things now that needs to be uh, looked at here, but then it will retrograde. When Mars retrogrades, that's probably the period that you would like to, in fact, start um, doing those repairs. That will be April 18th and it will retrograde until June 30th. So that will give you ample time, but it's not just the fourth house where Mars will retrograde. It will tap back into the third house. Uh, where we were from January 4th. So you're going to be, again, looking at uh, cooperating a little bit more with your siblings or your neighborhood, your community. Um, you might just see that transportation. Things might need to be looked over there, too, and under there uh, comes or sorts vehicles. So your car might need a tune-up. Great time to have that done. Then we'll see that Mars will speed up. It will get back into the area of the home. So we're seeing we're, we're switching, flip-flopping flop, between the third and fourth house. But then it's going to pick up uh, here uh, in August and speed through there August and September. But then we're looking at a glorious time here for you, uh, Virgo, which has to do with love and romance, fifth house. Uh, it's a playful time where you're hanging free and loose. There has been extra, um, should I say, responsibilities for you here earlier. So this is a time for you to do what you would love to do. And uh, for you, those of you single, it will be a time where you can find somebody new in your life, maybe a soulmate. Um, there is also uh, children 
coming in here. Maybe they might need a little bit more of your focus or your support, perhaps. Uh, so I, I do see you interacting with them somewhat more. Uh, there might be one or more of your children that are going through a period of transformation. When that Mars meets up with Pluto, you will know what that is. So we will have that to, to work with. Then here towards the end of the year, late autumn, uh, say October, November there, it's Mars now looking at you and how you are streamlining your day-to-day -day activity. It has to do with health, working out, are you getting enough of that in your life? Are you wanting to change up your diets? This is a great time to do so. Mars helps keep us focused. It keeps our nose on that target. And uh, so any routines that you actually implement here at this time can actually carry you forward for the next two years. So it is an important time to be aware of it. But you may hear too, Virgo, and, and you're so conscientious. You always are. You might just see that since it's also the area of work, not necessarily your career, but your work area, Mars here is quite dynamic looking into it and wanting to get things up to spiff. You might just come to see that there may be others needing you. You would be the go-to person to help them organize and strategize their life as well. So you might see that you will take some extra time off to do exactly that. At the end of 2016, Mars is going to go into your committed area of relationships. So this could be your significant other focusing on him or her, uh, spending more time, deepening your relation, and uh, it may be that your partner is going to need you more, your focus, your support, your energy and attention. So, and I see that you're really happy to give that. That's something that you always are, Virgo. So it, it's really ending up on a good note. 2015 for you, Virgo, was very much so an outgoing type energy. You, you were more public, you were more out and about, expanding, getting your recognition and so forth. But 2016 is going to be more so you wanting to work on your inner skills, developing your inner skills and your inner needs are wanting to be a little bit more met than they were last year because last year you were giving in 2015. Now it's more about receiving and being receptive to such. Now we have some uh, retrogrades that we really do want to check out and I hope you got your pen out so we can write down a few dates. If not, you can always come back at a later time too. And we're going to start off with Jupiter. Jupiter being in your first house is such a blessing because Jupiter is expanding your sense of self. Your personality is more joyful, it is optimistic, and you're feeling that you're starting to embed and grow. And this started here late um, summer of 2015. So it's going to follow you uh, straight through here of late summer into August there of um, 2016. And uh, it's a time where consciousness is really going to open up new dimensions. I see you reaching more so for your spirituality too. Wanting to deepen down and uh, incorporate more of this, I feel, in your your day-to-day -day beliefs. Um, you're, you're feeling too that the optimism in your nature is helping you flow. So you have a great flow uh, this year. Now it will retrograde between January 8th through that of Mer uh, May 10th. So this will be a time for you to kind of look back over what you have accomplished thus far since say August of 2015 until uh, now and uh, see how you can implement it perhaps better. You want to look at what opportunities came to you. Maybe you didn't have time to, to focus on it because you were busy, but this would be a time to see, wow, maybe that was interesting or maybe, wow, I should deepen into that material. So there's a, a, a growth of consciousness till May 10th. Now, any time after May 10th, it would be a good time for you if you'd like to travel. That's what Jupiter loves to do. Um, and you would have very successful good journeys as well. 
Now we have four Mercury retrogrades, and I know the stereotypical type, and I've said this on these other forecasts too, is that I know we tend to think, oh my God, here we go again. Mercury retrograde, delays and things going off the shaft and so forth. But listen, we have to really love what Mercury retrogrades do for us. If we can look at the what, what it gives us of growth and opportunity, then we will look at it differently and we'll actually welcome the little bit of a slowdown that we get. Um, the first one will be January 5th to 25th, one degree in uh, Aquarius, which is your sixth house. So you will see that the slowdown here is going to help you catch up with your daily routines at work or with the people around you at work. You might be able to organize, strategize things so that you could be better equipped to have more flow, efficient flow. And I know that you love that, Virgo. April 29th through May 23rd, 23 degrees in Taurus. Mercury will retrograde. It's in the area of long distance travel. So if you're thinking of going abroad, um, expect that yes, there could be a, a few delays perhaps, but I'm also seeing that what it will bring back to you is people from the past that you haven't seen for a while. This is always such a blessing, so we wanna be happy for it. And it will give you a little time to step aside from the busy, hectic day-to-day -day life that you have so that you can deepen more so into hmm, your research, whatever it is you're studying or feeling called to, to deepen into, which could be spiritual and metaphysical uh, situations. Of course, that is what the ninth house is. It will give you ample time to catch up with that side of yourself. Now, August 31st through September 22nd, so uh, that will be, uh, you know, in your birth month there, Mercury will retrograde 29 degrees in your sign. So it will be moving back in over that first house. And this is where Jupiter, as we mentioned, has been expanding your life. So having retrograde in this first house, I see it as a cosmic vacuum cleaner, especially since Jupiter has just left there. Jupiter might have left some crumbs. Some of them can be small, incredibly powerful treasure chests. Okay, so pay attention to what may come back to you in this month, August 31st to September 22nd. It can leave you with something really awesome by the end of this period. And then the last retrograde we have is December 19th through January 8th, 2017. And this retrograde starts off 15 degrees in Capricorn, which is smack in the middle of your fifth house for love and romance. This is going to give you time to figure out what it is you both want. If you are in a relationship, this will be a time where you can have some extended period uh, of time to catch up and have some fun. It is a great house to have a retrograde in. It's very creative. And you might just come to see, though, that there might be a few things that needs to be balanced here um, with the children. They they might make some decisions. They might feel a little like uh, stuck in the matrix, so to speak, and will need a parent's guidance. So we have that, too, uh, just there as we're turning into 2017. I would like to say, though, since Jupiter here being in your sign and all, we know it's in your first house, but if you listen to your moon or your rising sign, you will see where Jupiter is casting its blessings throughout that of 2016 in your chart in other areas. So uh, therefore, it would behoove you to listen to it. And also, I bet you're excited to see what's up with your partner here in the coming year. And I am excited to see what your terroscopes for 2016 is going to show up in the New Year's reading, and that is coming up fairly soon, so that you will have that to look forward to here as well. If you're not subscribed, you can do that now, so you'll be sure to get it. So all that said, I wish you a beautiful 2016, and may it be a fabulous year for you, Virgo.